my last lecture we discussed the limitations of a linear regulated power supply i told you that linear regulated power supplies are bit heavy and bulky because they use a 50 hertz step down transformer second is source current is peaky has a predominant third harmonic component because source supplies power only for a very short duration when the output voltage or unregulated voltage is becomes equal to the input voltage diodes gets forward biased so very for a very short duration source supplies power and at that time when the instant diode turns on a large current flows basically source current is peaky power factor is poor third is efficiency is low because the series element or the regulating element comes in is connected in series series with the load or it is in the main path of the power flow and it is always acts in or it's operated in linear or active mode okay the difference between unregulated and regulated is dropped across the series element okay so it is invariably it is operated in linear region losses are high temperature rise temperature rise then therefore you require a larger heat sink whereas a switched mode power supply they operated in very high frequency the magnetics which are used in smps or switch mode power supplies they are operated in very high frequency then i told you that as the frequency of operation increases size of a transformer or an inductor or for that matter the ref, the capacitor filter requirement comes down okay so first one in the series is the buck converter i had explained you the principle of operation when i close the s inductor current builds up diode is reverse biased okay and when i open s the inductor current free wheels through with the diode okay so while deriving the transfer function we made assumptions the assumption that we made are v not is constant and ripple free all the circuit elements are ideal switches are also ideal and these are the equivalent circuits inductor current builds up here inductor current free wheels through diode and it falls okay so and i did discuss the various waveforms here switch is on inductor current increases diode is on inductor current falls okay at steady state i mean at t is equal to 0 is equal to t is equal to t or beginning of the next cycle see the switch current the moment i turn on the switch the current that is flowing through the diode at this point at this point the current starts flowing through the switch or the source okay the source current jumps here increases and when the switch is off source current becomes instantaneously zero okay so source supplies power only for a short duration here or only for the duration when the switch is on okay same thing when the diode current also instantaneously rises to i peak reduces and at this instant it falls abruptly okay when the switch is on voltage across the switch is zero and when it is off when it is off see here voltage across the switch is vdc itself because diode is conducting this point gets connected to this point so voltage across the switch is vdc itself and when switch is on 
VDC appears across the diode. Okay. So, in both the cases or the voltage rating of S as well as D is VDC itself. Okay. And this is the variation in the capacitor voltage. Okay. Over here we assume that or in the analysis we assume that voltage output voltage remains constant, but then this does vary, but over a very narrow range. Generally output voltage ripple is specified, it is very small. Okay. So when that is when does it charge charging and when does it start discharging? At any given point, KCL has to hold good. Okay, IL is equal to IC plus I naught. Okay, ripple in V naught is very small, so therefore V naught by R is a ripple in I naught that can be really neglected. Okay, so I'm assuming that load current remains constant at I naught which is equal to V naught by R okay. This is the positive direction of current. If the current flows in this direction capacitor charges and if the current reverses capacitor discharges okay. So out here current starts from a minimum value increases reaches a peak and this is the average value of the load current I naught this is I naught is equal to V naught by R. From T is equal to 0 to till this point you find that inductor current is less than inductor current is less than the load current I naught. So therefore the remaining current has to come from the capacitor, remaining current has to come from the capacitor. So capacitor is discharging, capacitor V naught is changing. From this point to till here you will find that inductor current is higher than the load current. Mind you see the load switch is opened here, S is opened, diodes are conducting. Since the current is higher than I naught, capacitor continues to charge till here. So from here capacitor starts charging till here and beyond this point again it starts discharge. Okay. So please do not think that the moment you turn on S output capacitor starts charging. No, it all depends on the inductor current and the average load current. Okay. We have assumed that inductor is ideal, switch is also ideal, therefore the losses that are taking place in the converter is approximately 0. So under that condition input power should be equal to the output power. What is the input power? Input power is the battery voltage, source voltage into source current, VDC into IS, VDC into IS should be equal to V naught into I naught, this is the output power, IS is the source current, average. We have derived an expression, output voltage V naught is equal to D into VDC. So therefore IS source current is equal to D into I naught. So therefore average value of the source current is less than the average value of the load current. Okay. See here if you see in the in the waveform also source current supply source supplies power for a only till DT or when the switch is on source supplies power. Okay. And but then the moment the switch is turned on instantaneous value of current is high. This is the I minimum is the current value that current that starts flowing through the source okay. and it abruptly starts falling. Okay. What is desirable? Desirable is source also supplies a constant value of current. Okay. The moment see it has to supply abrupt value of current, there are stresses, stress on the on the source increases. Okay. 
take for example you are just sitting all of a sudden i'll come and put 10 kg on your head immediate instantaneously so there's going to be a a heavy load coming on you okay instead if i gradually increase or gradually increase the load it is better or i can i will not get exhausted all of a sudden i'm um, instantaneously i'll come and put a heavy load on you definitely i don't think you can sustain you may you may collapse though a steady state you may be able to carry that much of load okay same thing happens true in in the phys any any physical device wherein if you instantaneously load it it may not be able to supply that much of current or the stress on the on the equipment increases okay so it's always it's better to have a constant value of current okay but in this case it's just not possible so definitely in order to reduce the stress on the on the source we need to have some sort of a lc filter at the input okay you need to have some sort of a lc filter at the input okay a source a small lc filter and a switch okay just to reduce the current stresses that on the source okay now what is the expression for the ripple that is ripple ripple in the current that is flowing through the inductor or current in il okay after all how do i choose the value of inductor and how do i choose the value of c output capacitor okay definitely i need to specify the ripple in the current as well as the ripple in the output voltage okay so we'll make one assumption that is while deriving an expression for the ripple in the current that is flowing through il i neglect the ripple in the voltage output voltage v not okay and vice versa okay. if that is the case rate of change of current dl by dt dt is given by vdc minus v not divided by l when the switch is on okay so v not is nothing but d into vdc so the equation to this line is i mean plus the slope of the line okay the one minus d into t okay so i is equal to i max at this point at the time t is equal to dt okay so this is the expression for i max for during this duration from when the switch is open current falls current falls from i max to i min okay the slope of this line is now minus v not by l remember because voltage across the inductor is minus v not so substitute for v not you'll get d into vdc divided by l so equation for il is given by this okay il is equal to i max to this okay there's nothing but it's very simple if i know the the coordinates coordinates at this two point i can write the equation of the line okay again i is equal to i min at t is equal to t substitute at this point so you'll get i min is equal to t time period t minus dt what is the ripple in the current this is the ripple in the current i max minus i min okay is given by this term okay this is the ripple in the current so when it is maximum of course you differentiate it with respect to d and equate it to d equate it to zero you'll find that ripple is maximum when d is equal to 0.5 and it is given by vdc by t into Four by L. So L can be selected, or L is selected in such a way that, having specified the maximum ripple, 
the input voltage and T L can be determined. Okay. Switching frequency is decided, input is the source voltage, current ripple is specified, that is the design value. So you choose the value of L. Okay. Now how do I determine the ripple in the output voltage in V naught? Okay. This is the expression for or this is the variation in the inductor current I max I mean to I max when the inductor current is less than I naught less than I naught capacitor is supplying that current capacitor discharges okay and at this point both are same inductor current as well as the load current is the same and beyond this point inductor current increases capacitor starts charging till here. So in this region capacitor is, is charging okay capacitor discharging, charging, discharging. So this is the change in uh, ripple in the output voltage, ripple in the output voltage. From 0 to T, what is the equation for the capacitor current IC? Okay. It is given by this, this is delta IL by 2. Various, various linearly, linearly with the time. So this is the expression for IC. Okay, this is the expression for IC. And again, from DT to T, variation is linear, and expression for current is given by this. Okay. So variation in the output voltage that is delta V naught is equal to 1 by C integral of I C D T in this region. Okay. In this region is a change in the voltage. So that is the capacitor current I C D T. Okay. So integrate it, you will find that expression for V naught is given by this okay. in both cases I have written the expression there. Now substitute for I L from the previous value you will get delta V naught is given by this equation. So if I again delta V naught is maximum for D is equal to 0.5 both cases delta current ripple in the current as well as ripple in the output voltage is maximum for d is equal to 0 0.5 so if i mention if i specify value of dv naught i can choose the value of c because all of the values are fixed t is fixed vdc is fixed l is fixed from the previous value so that's about the buck converter operating in continuous zone in other words inductor current varies from I min which is non-zero to I max. Okay. It may so happen that the inductor current may become zero <coughs> and remain zero for a finite time. So what are that condition? Okay. Or in what way the inductor current is related to I naught or what is the relationship or what is the critical value of R? above which the, the inductor current is going to be a discontinuous. Okay. The variation in I L increases, decreases, this is a constant value of I naught. Okay. Now inductor current is continuous or is positive if I naught, I naught is higher than higher than delta i by 2 ripple this ripple okay definitely is this value is higher than delta i by 2 inductor current is always positive 
okay always positive if i not is less than delta i by 2 then the inductor current is going to be discontinuous okay discontinuous now please in in ac to dc conversion especially in a line commutated converters so when it is discontinuous is implied that what does it imply the load current will going to be discontinuous whereas in dc to dc conversion or in power supplies okay the discontinuous current implies that implies that current in the inductor is discontinuous please don't say that load current is discontinuous how can you have a load current discontinuous we have assumed that assume that output voltage remains approximately constant v not supposed to be constant and triple free so therefore if i connect a load and and the circuit is complete current has to flow therefore invariably we assume that i not i not the load current is constant and triple free the question of discontinuity doesn't arise unless until load circuit is open okay so in buck converter or a few more power supply that we'll be seeing okay when i'm saying discontinuous current it implies that the inductor current okay so this is the relationship v not by r is average value of current should be greater than or equal to delta l by 2 this value so if i substitute for il from the previous value you will get this equation critical value of critical value of r should be this if if the load resistance is less than this value you have always continuous conduction okay so if the load resistance is higher than this value you will go in for a discontinuous what is the consequence what will happen we have derived a transfer function v not is equal to d into vdc we derived it assuming that inductor current is continuous current when the diode is continuously conducted diode conducts from dt to t okay only then voltage across it becomes minus v0 and we equated this voltage is positive when the switch is on voltage across inductor is positive when diode is conducting voltage across inductor is negative we equated it since average voltage across inductor should be zero and we got vdc is equal to or v not is equal to d into vdc and it is independent of the inductor current il okay v not is equal to d into vdc and il doesn't appear there okay only only condition is il should be continuous what happens if il is discontinuous okay so when the diode has stopped conducting what happens to the voltage across the inductor now so current has become zero much before the beginning of the next cycle so when you when i turn on the switch s current starts from zero and starts increasing or oh, very linearly okay maybe for the source is better now it starts from zero okay and when the current has become zero or when the diode has turned off what is the voltage that is appearing across the switch no current is flowing through the inductor so potential at this point potential at this point is same as the potential at this point okay so 
this potential is V naught, this potential is V naught, this potential is V naught, okay, plus V naught. This potential is VDC. So, voltage across the switch is VDC minus V naught, VDC minus V naught. If the current is continuous, voltage across the switch is VDC itself. For the entire region, we would have had VDC. Now, current has become 0, voltage at this point is V naught, no current is flowing through the inductor. So, definitely voltage at this point is equal to voltage at this point. Okay. Both points are at the same potential, therefore, no current. So, this potential is V naught this is VDC differences appearing across the switch. So, VDC minus V naught. Okay. What happens to the voltage across the diode? Voltage across the diode is same as V naught because what is the potential that is appearing at this point? It is V naught. Okay. So, therefore, when the diode is on voltage across it is 0 when it turns off, so voltage that is appearing across the diode is V naught and when I turn on the switch again, okay, current starts increasing now, so voltage across the switch is, is VDC itself because this point closes, so entire source voltage appears across the diode. So, it is V naught from beta T to T. Okay. So, this during this period voltage across the diode is V naught, voltage across the switch is V D C minus V naught and beyond T when you turn on S it jumps to minus V naught. Okay. So, what are the circuit equations? Circuit equations are same. DIL by DT is equal to VDC minus V naught divided by T, but only thing is if the current is continuous circuit equation when the switch is opened is DL by DT is equal to minus V naught by L and it is true for true from DT to T, whereas now this equation is true from DT to beta T, okay, when beta is the instant where the current becomes 0. Okay. So, this is the expression for current V D C minus V naught into T and I L was the current. Okay. This is the peak value of current or the, the current that is attained just prior to opening the switch that is V D C minus V naught by L into D into T when D into T this is I max, this is I max minus the reduction in the current. From beta t to t I L is 0 and current becomes 0 at t is equal to beta t. Okay. So, I L is equal to 0 you equate it. So, you will find that V D C minus V naught divided by L into d into t this term should be equal to this term. So, expression for V naught is now d into V d c divided by beta and beta is less than 1, beta is less than 1, beta is less than 1. So, what is the result? If the current is discontinuous, output voltage V naught is d into V d c independent of the inductor current. If the current is discontinuous, for a given value of D, output voltage is higher than D into V D C. Okay. Output voltage in the discontinuous case is higher than D into V D C. It is given by D V D C divided by beta, where beta is the instant where the current becomes 0 and is always less than 1. Yes, that is about the buck converter, wherein the output voltage V naught is always less than or equal to V D C depends on D the duty cycle. 
is almost the same as a step down transformer in AC. Output voltage is less, depends on number of turns n, whereas the source current or the input primary current again is higher than that is about the buck converter, wherein the output voltage is always less than the input voltage. Okay. It is almost the same as a step down transformer in AC. Okay. Whatever that happens in a step down transformer, it happens in a buck converter. Therefore, we can call it as a, a, a step down DC transformer. We can call a buck converter as a step down DC transformer. Okay. In AC, we had a step up transformer. So, definitely we will have or we should have a step up DC transformer also. So, that is nothing but a boost converter. We have already studied this in switch mode rectification. Okay. I will repeat it here and will derive the other expressions. Okay. Shown here, switch inductor, diode and the output stage. Okay. Switch is closed for D into T, diode is off, capacitor supplies power, open S, stored energy in the inductor is transferred to the output. Okay. Out here, I am making an assumption saying that, remember, again I will emphasize, V naught is constant and ripple free, constant and ripple free. Okay. So, what is the circuit equation here? V L is equal to V D C, therefore, I L increases linearly, capacitor is supplying power, I naught is equal to minus C D V naught by D T, that is V naught by R. Okay. Here, V L or voltage across the inductor is V D C minus V naught and this should be negative, only then current decreases. Here V D C voltage across the inductor is positive, I L increases. So, at steady state current should increase here and current should decrease in this case. So, I L should fall when I open the switch or when the switch is opened I L should decrease. So, V D C minus V naught is negative, in other words V naught should be higher than V D C, hence the name boost converter. And K C L at this point is capacitor current C D V C by D T or D V naught by D T, D V naught by D T capacitor voltage is same as V naught here plus V naught by R should be equal to I L. Okay. So, when the switch is closed, voltage across it is 0, voltage across the diode is minus V naught, voltage across the diode is minus V naught here, entire V naught appears across the diode, this point gets connected at this point. And when the diode is conducting, when the switch is on, again V naught appears across it. So, in both the cases, voltage rating of switch as well as the diode is V naught. Okay. I will assume, I had assumed that V naught and V D C are constant and ripple free. I will equate it and I will find that. V naught is V D C divided by 1 minus C, this is a transfer function. Okay. So, if I plot, I will get this set of a variation. The V naught by V D C is equal to 1, when D is equal to 0, that means switch is open, switch is opened, average voltage at inductor is 0. So, therefore, 
average value of the input is same as average value of the output and it increases and goes towards infinity for d is equal to 1 provided system is ideal okay. I have assumed that all the circuit elements are ideal okay, all the circuit elements are ideal, inductor is lossless, both voltage source are constant and ripple free. See there is a flaw in our assumptions, we will we will find out what are their flaws okay. Now I have assumed the system to be lossless, so input power should be equal to output power. So, V D C into I S where I S is the source current should be equal to V naught into I naught, we substitute for V naught, you will get the relationship between the source current and the output current, okay. So, therefore, I S is equal to I naught divided by 1 minus D, okay. So, I S is given by, I S is given by I naught d by 1 minus d, simple. Now, we will derive our transfer function taking into account the non-idealities or taking into account the internal resistance of the inductor. I have not derived it for the buck converter, okay. Now, what may happen in the buck converter when d is equal to 1? When d is equal to 1, source continuously supplies power to the load, okay. So, d is equal to 1, so average value of V naught is equal to average value of the input voltage, V naught is d into V dc, okay. Whereas, if I approach or if I make d is equal to 1 here, output voltage in an ideal converter, that is what the expression says that output voltage tends to infinity, looks like there is a problem, looks like there is a problem. If I take into account or if I take a consider the converter to be a ideal one, okay. So, therefore, we will take the non-idealities into account and we will find that what are our flaws or what in our assumption that we made. So, we will consider a small r resistance of the inductor, okay. Now, circuit equation is the same, KVL is r into I L plus L d i by d t, the secondary correction is the same and when the switch is opened, it is V d c is equal to r into I L plus L d i by d t plus V naught, okay. That is the KVL here, KVL here. Now, I will find out the average values, this is true for 0 to d t and this is from d t to t, I will take the average values and I will add them, okay. So, V d c is here, V d c is here, r into I l, r into I l, L d i by d t, L d i by d t and V naught is here only from d t to t. So, what do I get? V d c, average value is the same, r into I l. L d i by d t is the average value plus 1 over t d 2 to t into t into v naught into d t because this v naught is there only from d t to t. Similarly, the current equation if you see d v naught c v d v naught v naught by r v naught by r and is equal to I l here from d t to t is 0 here. So, if I were to find out the average value or integrate it and you do it, you will get this value C d v naught by d t average v naught by r. So, 1 over t d t to t to t i l d t, okay. So, at steady state, the variation in inductor current average value should be 0 at steady state, current increases and decreases. It has to retain the same value at t is equal to 0, is equal to t is equal to the beginning of the next period, okay. Similarly, the output voltage, okay. Of course, capacitor voltage does change, but then average value should be 
remain constant. Or in other words, average current flowing through the capacitor should be zero at steady state. Average value of the current that is flowing through the capacitor should be zero at steady state. Okay. So I will get two equations because this is zero, this is zero. So the two resulting equations are R D C is equal to R into I L plus one minus D into V naught. Okay. See if R tends to zero, you have the same equation. V D C is equal to one minus D into V naught. Okay. The difference between an ideal and non-ideal is only this R into I L. But looks like it affects significantly. We'll see sometime later. Okay. Similarly, I naught is equal to one minus D into I L. Now I will do some jugglery, I will multiply this equation 1 by 1 minus d and I will get this equation. Okay. Multiply this equation by 1 minus d, I will get this. Now I have here 1 minus d into I L, I have 1 minus d into I L, I L. so I will substitute, so I will get this equation. Okay, very simple maths. So now I'll write an expression for V naught in terms of V D C and D. So you'll get this. Okay. Again, if you substitute here, R is equal to zero. R is equal to zero. So you'll get same as V naught is equal to V D C divided by one minus D. So this term is one zero. This gets cancelled of this. The same equation. Okay. But then, what will happen for finite values of r? Okay, small r. If d is equal to zero, if d is equal to zero, what is the average value of the output voltage? It is no longer is equal to VDC. Now I have a potential divider, a small r here, see here, a small r here and a r here, input is V D C. So output voltage V naught is V D C divided by r plus r, that is the current that is flowing, multiplied by this r is the output voltage. Okay. It is not equal to V D C itself. Okay. So as D increases, V naught also increases. Okay. If you see in this equation, see in this equation, when D is equals to one, D equals to one, output voltage is zero. Output voltage is zero. See, we have a very interesting equation here. If I neglect R, if I neglect R here and d is equal to 1, d is equal to 1, v naught becomes infinity and if I consider r at d is equal to 1, v naught becomes 0, v naught becomes 0. If I neglect r, d is equal to 0, output voltage is same as the input voltage. If I take R into account, output voltage is V naught divided by R plus R into R, small r plus R multiplied by the load resistance, capital R, which is less than VDC itself. Fine, there is no much difference because the winding tail and resistance is very small compared to the load resistance. What happens when D is equal to 1? If I neglect the winding resistance R or the internal resistance of the inductor, D is equal to 1, V naught is equal to infinity. 
Now, if I take r into account, v naught becomes 0. v naught becomes 0. Why such a large difference? Ideal case infinity, non ideal case 0. Such a large difference. Ideal transformer, no load current is very small. So, ideal transformer, no load current is 0. Non ideal transformer, no load current is of the order of 5, 2 to 5 percent a good transformer. Here ideal boost converter V naught is infinity, non ideal boost converter V naught is 0. Poles apart, why so? I will address, I will come to that point. Now, but then as D increases in both cases V naught starts increasing initially. And d is equal to 1, in the second case it becomes 0. So, definitely for one value of d, v naught approach, v naught becomes maximum and becomes, and from there onwards it starts decreasing. How do I find? I will differentiate that equation and equate it to 0. With the differentiate with respect to d and equate it to 0, you will find that, you will find that this value of d is equal to 1 minus r divided by r, square root of the equation. You need to differentiate this equation. V naught is equal to V D C 1 minus D into this. Okay, you differentiate it with respect to D, equate it to D, you will find the value of D at that instant V naught is maximum. Okay. So, that value of D is found to be this. So, if you substitute r is equal to 0, d is equal to 1, same, the ideal case infinity. And if you put this value, you substitute this value in this equation, substitute for d, you will get v is equal to v max and that is equal to v d c divided by r divided by r. r is the load resistance this small r. Therefore, V naught the maximum voltage that you can get at the output is a strong function of the internal resistance of the inductor. It depends on the ratio of the load resistance to the internal resistance of the boost converter. Okay. As this ratio increases as the, the internal resistance becomes 0. In other words, I am going towards the ideal case voltage, I can get a higher maximum voltage, V naught, in, v naught max increases. Okay. So, see here, R is equal to, sorry, it does not decrease, it increase, goes on increasing, please it 1 and goes on increasing, it does not decrease. It attains the peak and comes down, it attains the peak and comes down, please. It starts from 1, increases, attains the peak and comes down. If r is equal to 0, it becomes infinity. So, r by r for this curve is higher compared to this. Now, what is the difference? 0 and infinity. Before answering this question, I would like to ask what are the assumptions that we made? We said that VDC is VDC and V naught are constant and ripple free. VDC and V naught are constant and ripple free. D is equal to 1 or D approaches 1, what does it imply? Most of the time switch is closed and what is the equivalent circuit when the switch is closed? See here is the equivalent circuit when the switch is closed. Capacitor continuously supplying power to the load and switch is uh, inductor current increases linearly and when S is equal to 1, what does it imply? 
S is equal to 1 implies that switch is permanently closed, switch is permanently closed, capacitor is permanently supplying power to the load. What is the situation? This situation result into a case wherein output voltage becomes zero, capacitor has to discharge and capacitor will discharge, it is continuously supplying power, it does not receive power at all when D is equal to 1. So, capacitor voltage gradually decreases and becomes zero and what happens at the input stage? A VDC is permanently applied across an inductor, a constant voltage is permanently applied across the inductor. So, L dI by dt is VDC that is positive, so in other words dI by dt goes on increasing. Yes, the device, the inductor or the source have their own current rating capacity, beyond a point VDC will fail or inductor will fail or switch will fail. At steady state, if the switch is permanently closed, current is steady state current is VDC divided by small r, inductor is saturated, inductor is saturated, VDC divided by small r, r is very small, so a large current will flow and it will definitely damage all three or one of them, okay. And at the output, V naught becomes 0, V naught becomes. So, there is a flaw in our assumption or in other words assumptions are valid only if the value of D is low. As D approaches 1, our assumptions are not valid. What are they? V naught is constant and triple free. No, V naught will decrease, V naught will decrease. Here current increases and it may saturate the inductor and may damage the source or inductor or the switch. Our assumptions are not valid for high values of D, they are valid only for low values of D, okay. For low values of D implies I closing the switch dumping the energy, closing the switch dumping an energy. So, now I can safely assume that output voltage will remain approximately constant and here inductor does not such, okay. That is, so remember our analysis is everything correct only the problem with our assumptions. So, what is the average value of the current? So, VDC divided by R by R is true. Voltage input voltage is VDC for D is equal to 0. In other words, switch is permanently open. The current that is flowing is the total resistance of the circuit. VDC divided by the total resistance is R divided by R. Average value of this current goes on increasing with the D and at D is equal to 1, it is VDC divided by R. D is equal to 1, switch is permanently closed. Current that is flowing is VDC divided by small r, will be very high. I do not think you can achieve that value, okay. 